Hello, gang. We're going to solve exam problems in thermodynamics that involve changes in entropy, enthalpy, and Gibbs free energy for phase changes. And this is geared towards a general chemistry class. And it's going to be awesome. Uh, but before we jump into the problems, very briefly go over some of the theory of what we're going to be using. So at the phase change temperature, the phases are in equilibrium. And this is the Gibbs free energy equation. And at equilibrium, the change in the Gibbs free energy is equal to zero. So that we have zero equals the change in enthalpy minus temperature times the change in entropy. Okay, now we have various phase changes. If we have a, a melting or a boiling situation or sublimation, this requires energy. So this requires energy. So or uh, I'll just say requires energy, requires E. That means it's endothermic. So the change in enthalpy is greater than zero. We got to put energy into the system and the entropy, because we're going from, say like if we're melting, we're going from a solid to a liquid. We're having more possible arrangements, more disorder. We have a greater change in entropy. Now, if we're freezing, energy is being released. Heat is being, energy is being released as heat. So the change in enthalpy is less than zero. And because of that, because we're going from like a liquid to a more orderly state, the change in entropy is less than zero. So kind of this is the key, these are the key equations that we're going to use in our real exam problems. Okay, so our first one, number one, for toluene, the change in enthalpy of vaporization, and this circle means it's uh, under standard state of one bar, uh, equals 30.8 kilojoules per mole. And the question is asking us to calculate the change in entropy this is of the system because there's no su uh, subscript. This is of the surroundings, change in entropy of the surroundings at its boiling temperature of 80.1 degrees Celsius. So if it's at its boiling temperature, then we know the Gibbs free energy, changing Gibbs free energy is zero. So that's equal to the change in the enthalpy minus the change temperature ch times the change in the entropy. And these superscripts mean it's under one bar. Uh, we want to know, what do we want? We want the, so to calculate this, we got to first calculate the change in entropy of the system. If there's no subscript, it means it's for the system. So if we solve for this, the change in entropy of the system is going to equal the change in enthalpy divided by the temperature. And we'll plug this in. Uh, so the change in enthalpy is 30.8 uh, kilojoules, which is times 10 to the 3 joules per mole divided by, now the temperature has to be in Kelvin. So uh, we'll just, we'll do it all in one fell swoop. It's, it's 80.1 80 plus 273.15, and that's all going to be in Kelvin. So plug that into our calculator. Uh, 30.8 times 10 to the power of 3 divided by, big bracket, 80.1 plus... 0.1 plus 273.15 is 87.19. So 87.19 joules per mole Kelvin. Joules per mole Kelvin. And we have three sig figs. This is to one decimal place. Three sig figs. So 87.2 uh, joules per mole Kelvin. That's the change in entropy of the system. The change in enthalpy of the surrounding. So by definition, the thermodynamic definition of entropy is equal to Q over the T. And this is Q of the system. Energy transferred is heat of the system. So if we want the change in entropy of the surroundings, we'll make that standard state. It has to be the energy transferred as heat of the surroundings, which is going to be equal to the negative, the energy transferred as heat to the system. And under constant pressure with PV work only, this is equal to delta H. So it'll be nega negative delta H not over the temperature. Okay, so now we just literally plug this in. Now we just did this, right? We already did this number here. So because of this, we're plugging in the same numbers. So we're gonna get 87.2 joules per mole Kelvin. Uh, negative, that's important, equals negative. So the change in entropy is increasing because it's boiling. It's going from a liquid to a gas. That means the surroundings are losing entropy. So that's 
the end of the question. Okay, next one. Number two, calculate the change in entropy of fusion, the standard change in entropy, and the standard change in entropy of fusion, enthalpy of fusion for the melting of water at zero degrees Celsius given. So this is slightly different. We have data on the molar entropy of water as a liquid, the molar entropy of water as a solid right here. So what's going on? Maybe we'll write it really quickly. We have water as it's melting. So we have water as a solid. And it's going to water uh, uh, as a liquid. And then at zero degrees Celsius, we're in equilibrium because that's at the, the melting point right here. So the change, uh, the change in entropy of this process of fusion is going to be products minus reactants, right? So it'll be the molar entropy of water uh, H2O of our liquid because it's melting minus the molar entropy of the H2O as a solid. So that'll equal, I'll write it over here. Uh, it's, it's going to a liquid, so 65 joules per mole Kelvin minus 43 joules per mole Kelvin. And that's gonna equal, what is that? 20, 22, 22 joules per mole Kelvin. Okay, so that's the change in entropy of fusion. We want the change in enthalpy. And to get that, we'll use the Gibbs free energy equation where uh, we have the change in Gibbs free energy equals the change in enthalpy minus temperature times the change in entropy. And we'll make these under standard state. This, this Gibbs free energy, change in Gibbs free energy is zero because it's a phase change. So just like before we got our equation, we'll have the change in enthalpy, standard change in enthalpy, equals the temperature times the standard change in entropy, which is equal to, so temperature is zero degrees Celsius. So in Kelvin, it's 273.15 Kelvin. The entropy change is 22 joules per mole Kelvin. Here I'm squeezing my life. On the whole right-hand side again, I'll make this a little nicer. 22, there we go. I'll plug that into our calculator. It is 273.15 times 22 is so we only have two sig figs here do we so 6.0 times 10 to the 3 6.0 times 10 to the 3 uh, this is joules per mole kelvin joules per mole kelvin which is the same as 6.0 kilojoules per mole kelvin okay hot dog all right next one estimate the sublimation temperature of dry ice which is co2 uh well a solid CO2 given the following data. Okay, so we're again we have a phase change going on, and we have this data here, and we want to know what temperature it sublimes at, uh, which is pretty cool. So this is like the it'll sublime at any temperature higher than that, but this is like the the, the phase change temperature that we want it at. Uh, again, we'll start with our Gibbs free energy equation, change in enthalpy minus temperature times the change in entropy. I will make these under standard state, one bar. So at the phase change temperature, this is zero. Gibbs for energy is zero. We have the change in enthalpy. Uh, I'll, I'll write it out again, and then I'll just I'll plug in the numbers. So that's equal to zero. So the temperature is going to equal, we'll transpose this to the other side, the change in enthalpy divided by the change in entropy. Change in, Molar change in enthalpy is... Okay, now this is very important, and don't get screwed up when if this happens. Uh, we got to be very, very careful. The change in enthalpy is in kilojoules, but the entropy is only in joules. So we got to make sure these are in the same units. Uh, it's, it's easy to get tripped up with that. So we're 26 times 10 to the 3 joules, because I want to convert this to joules. Joules over moles divided by 134 joules per Kelvin mole. And yeah, that's it. Okay, so we'll plug it in. 26 times 10 to the power of 3 divided by, what was it, 134? So, okay, so 194. That's 194 Kelvin. And it's around 78 degrees Celsius. 194 Kelvin. What is that in degrees Celsius? Let's take this number, subtract it to 73.15. 79 degrees Celsius. So 
very, very close to the accepted value. So that's great. That's kind of cool, hey, that you can determine. I mean, we can tell, find out what the phase change temperature is just based on thermodynamic data. We don't even have to go to the lab and we can do this for any substance as long as we have this data. That's kind of cool that we can do that. That's it for those exam problems. Hope you got some value from it. Thanks for watching. I've got many, 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 many other videos on thermodynamics and good luck on your midterms and final exams. I hope you do well. Hang in there. You can do it. You can do thermo. <laughs>